Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros. Who do we got on the show? Rocco's back, baby. What's up? What's up, man? Good to it's see been you, a, brother. Been a minute. It has, yeah, man. You've been living the fucking superstar life in LA. N- not, not really, dog. But you know how it is. It's a hustle. It is. So, I, look, it's a I, different hustle. I know it's a different hustle. Um, yeah. Everybody else who watches you on TV just thinks, oh, well, he's rich and famous, and that's kind of the fucking deal. But it's a constant grind, man, over and over and yeah. over. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? I chose not to do the constant grind, and luckily. I wouldn't even say luckily, just but coincidentally, the COVID thing hit. So I've been home working on nine to five just because I'm like, dude, I'm not going to I'm going to get ready for season three for my ends. And so mm-hmm. I decided, like, cut all cut all ties with Hollywood for now. Just be home, coach wrestling for the girls, all that shit. And, you know, luckily, man, COVID hit and I had a job the whole time. And I still have a job, bro. It's been weird, but um, it's just kind of the route I chose to take this time. I would love to be Hollywood 100 percent. But, bro, uh, low men on the total pole don't make the money that everyone probably assumes I do. And so, you know, I'm working nine to five right now until season three comes around. Dog. Yeah, man. And it's it's one of those things when you are on a show, everybody assumes like, oh, shit, you must be getting that regular money, dog. Well, Fucking if you're if you're a, like a, a 40 K, if you're one of the character actors on the show, you don't really get paid until season three plus for the most part right yeah unless they bring you on as a regular yeah. has that been yeah. in discussions yeah you know there's always discussions it, it all is going to be you know season three is a big one for us right we don't mm-hmm. have kurt sutter anymore and so it's kind of our chance to either show that we can do it or we can't right and so mm-hmm. it's a big year for us i'm excited for that opportunity um you know there's a lot of talks about my character and i'm just man i've just been doing a lot of acting school and classes and 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 training and so you know if they give me the opportunity man i'm gonna fucking show up and kill it well there's a big appetite for uh for that type of content right now for sure so i don't i wouldn't i mean i i I could see that show going seven to be honest i do i would love that but but like for me as an as an actor i hope it goes seven with me being a big character (laughs) right of course yeah i don't want to be you know a glorified background i really want to show my acting Mm -hmm. chops really that's what it is you know yeah, they. Uh, it's one of those things on that show, too, where you wake up and I'm sure every week you get the script, you wonder if I'm going to be killed out of it. Bro, like that exactly. Like the, the anxiety of just getting the script and just skimming through it real quick. Yeah. Just like skim, 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 skim. Oh, I'm still there. Sweet. <laughs> I got another episode. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, I know what they felt like on that other show. They were killing randoms off. Like I know what it feels like now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guy- I mean, it's, there's been a number of shows like that, like Breaking Bad. There was anxiety week to week. Yeah. Uh, the Sopranos, especially towards like oh, season yeah. four. Yeah. Like they started yeah. murdering the fuck out of everybody. Yeah, I did a movie with Big Pussy from The Sopranos, Mm -hmm. and he said the fucking saddest he's ever been in his entire life was he was on the greatest series of all time. He knew it, and then he got the last script for season one, and he was fucking killed. And he was just like, where do you go after that? And and it's crazy because you make friends with all these actors, and you're talking to them. You're like, bro, we're going to work together someday. Let's go grab a beer or whatever. And then the next day, you're like dog this is awkward man but like <laughs> i'm gonna miss you you know what i mean i'm gonna miss you <laughs> just eulogize them you, 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 have Eulog- to, eulogize and, the and character. you have the option to show up to the last table read and most people just don't right and i wouldn't either i'd be like oh, no i'm good dog I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> i think i uh, would just to do it and be like man i would look at the writer whoever wrote that episode and be like really motherfucker this you did it to me huh you it's decided so, to man. take my livelihood away <laughs> It's got to be so hard, man, to be on that side of it as well. You know what I mean? And look, it, you have to know this is part of the job, right? Yeah. I know this. I know that, you know what? Season three, episode one might be my last. We don't know. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I'm emotionally prepared for this, right? But, you know, you hear a conversation. Guys are super excited to be on the show. And then the next thing you hear that, you know, they're getting killed off. And you're like, fuck, man, this is depressing as shit. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's fucking crazy. Um, but the weird thing is you're probably walking around in public and I would imagine most people recognize you and you're like, oh, there's the dude from that show. And you're like, has anybody stopped you at the nine to five and been like, wait a minute, man, aren't you Bro, on the, the fucking Mayans I, and now you're yeah, here? They trip out all the time, dude. And it's all, like actually today I brought like five signatures to one of my accounts because um, they're just huge fans of the show. And, and, you know, they ask and I tell them, I said, look, man, I can be in L.A. hustling acting and working all day and never seeing my family or I could come home and get a regular nine to five job. I work, Mm -hmm. I work in sales. Uh, And this is funny. This is, this will be part of my documentary one day. I work, I pick up urine from toxicology from, from doctors and take it to a toxicology lab. I'm a sales rep for a company that my buddy owns. And so I told him, I said, look, here's the deal. I would love to be home coaching my daughters in wrestling when off season of Mayans, 
I don't have aspirations of jumping into any other films right now unless I'm producing something myself. Can I come work for you? And then when Mayans comes back around, jump back over there. And then when it's done, come back here. And he was like, fuck yeah. And he's a good buddy, man. He's like, yeah, fuck yeah, dude. And he's got this super successful business. And so now I'm like, it's super dope. I show up to work. I work on these accounts. I freaking pick up urine when I have to. I drop it off the toxicology lab. I'm helping people with addiction. And, you know, that's what I do every day. And then I go home and have dinner, bro. And it's a fucking dream, dude. Now, how much of the pee are you drinking? Like, yeah, percentage-wise? Yeah, none. Come on. <laughs> I don't believe no, that. I don't I'd, believe. T- I'd give it a quick taste. Yeah, just a little. <laughs> maybe if there's some on the rim, just lick off the side. Yeah. Like, you don't have to break the seal or nothing, but people are clumsy. Nah. There's going to be pee on the outside there's of that There's going to be container. a little bit on the outside to, Come on, to wet your beak with. You I know? Don't, I, this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think it's great. I, I think it's great because, look. It, the pandemic hits, and let's say you didn't have this job, you'd be fucked. Because right now, well, yeah. most actors who aren't rich are fucked right now. And all the people that uh, work, like the cast crew, and crew. Ev- everyone is mostly fucked. Mostly the crew. Everyone. Every, everyone. everyone is fucked. Because LA just got shut down again. Um, yeah. So all the bars and restaurants are shut down again. They don't know when production's coming back. Um, I've got a TV show on fucking hold right now for the same exact thing where it's like, oh, social distancing. How do we figure this out? And it's like, Shit, man. I, I don't know when things are going to open back up for a while. Um, yeah, dude. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I, it was either this or contracting, right? And it's like, mm-hmm. I could always go back to that, which I, I choose not to. I don't want to do that ever again. You know, but I'm just super lucky at the timing, man. I have a job and it's, it's a blessing. And so, yeah, I'm the same. I have several shows in, uh, that, that potentially could be picked up for production. And we were in all these talks and everything's looking good. I'm like, life is changing, baby. I'm selling shit. <laughs> it all got shut down, dude. So, you know, that's the way it goes. Yeah, it's, it's a strange time out there right now. Have, have the producers given you any sort of timetable of like when we hope to get back and going? No, you know, some of Hollywood opened up for production. I'm assuming just because everything happened recently, they're probably getting shut back down. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we're having our Zoom sessions and just kind of talking and, and, and just feeling out what the process is going to be like. But all in all, it's it's a big question mark, man. No one really knows. They say maybe the end of July, maybe the end of August, whether we're going to film at all this year. It's all up in the air, man. And so day to day, we're just like I said, I keep my mind off it so it don't stress me the fuck out. I just work and, and sure. go home. But um, I'm definitely excited for it to come out. And, and, you know, I need to lose about 10 pounds before it shows up. So I hope they give me a heads up. (laughs) (laughs) They definitely will. I I can tell you this. And I know Hollywood is is looking for unconventional places to shoot to try to get content out there. Netflix Netflix in particular, um, they are, are shooting in Iceland. I don't know if you've heard this. Um, Yeah. So the new Will Ferrell movie that just came out on Friday night um, is, is all shot. Wait, when, when, because Iceland is very far North and you get very little, uh, uh, daylight. Daylight, Correct. Yeah. For a very long, long period of time. So so I think their, their period is now, because I know it's over new years that it's all nights, right? Well, Iceland is one of the few places that doesn't have any coronavirus, right? Like they, yeah, they pretty much cut it off entirely. They've got like one case there, yeah. um, and it's, it's some guy named Dave. Yeah, it's just one fucking guy, asshole. Yeah, yeah, some asshole named. <laughs> Dave. Hey, did you hear Dave got fucking coronavirus, man? Yeah. So Dave, Dave I, was Dave was fucking a bat. God damn it. Yeah, yeah. man. Fucking well, you got Iceland. I, I, that's a two man job at least because somebody's got to hold those wings. Somebody's got to open the wings up for you. Yeah, you got to hold them down. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm not saying to do it. I'm just saying there's physics involved yeah, there, yeah. i think there's little legs too that you got to open up um, well that's why it's a two-man job you hold the leg somebody else holds the wind <laughs> correct. <laughs> correct yeah that's terrible yeah uh, i'm just fucking this cat you're the one holding the legs yeah so, yeah um <laughs> but iceland yeah so the new will ferrell movie with rachel mcadams so I, <laughs> oh that looks and, terrible by the way my wife and i watched it over the weekend with our kid you know because it was pg or whatever and uh it, it's all shot in iceland they're playing these weird, like, Icelandic characters, and you're like, what the fuck is going on? And then I read the article that a couple movies were shooting in Iceland to try to beat uh, the coronavirus, and I was like, all right, now this makes sense, because that looks like a real goddamn challenge to shoot in Iceland. Well, shit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I did I did an independent. I executive produced and acted in here. We did it in, like, man, we did it in one wing of a, of a retirement home that was closed off, and we had to film the whole thing there, and then one other scene at a house, right? And and it was right when it kind of launched, so we we luckily snuck it in before. It's fully done now. We're actually shopping it around, which is still hard, which I didn't think it would be because I know everyone's mm-hmm. thirsty for content. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of this, you know, I'm in Utah. It's obviously some kind of Christian undertone to it, but it's a cool film. I'd love to get it out there, but um, it's just weird times in, in Hollywood. Even catching someone in their office these days is almost impossible. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, it's impossible. So all the meetings I've had for this TV show have been on Zoom. 
and it's everybody's in their fucking house. You can usually see some one or two of their kids in the background, dogs. <laughs> Everyone looks like shit. Um, and you're trying to have these serious meetings about things, and you're like, man, this fucking thing is. Well, luckily, I've go for always while. been a piece of shit in meetings. Yes. Uh, like you I remember were built for this. Time I re- yeah, I know. I remember the first time I ever met uh, over the phone Ben Shapiro, and he's a pretty buttoned up guy, and I'm just saying horrible things the yeah. whole time. Yeah. This is when I worked for Black Rifle. We were getting him on for sponsorships. Uh, I'm just like saying all sorts of fucked up shit. And he's like, "All right, wow, wow, man, cool." All right, <laughs> but <laughs> well, then you feel then like you can when you're in quarantine. We're just like, eh, "Well, this was in 2017." But whatever. ah, perfect. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we then we met him, and he says, "Fuck more than I do." Like, Dan's been in quarantine for many years now. I have, yeah, yeah. I've, I've been <laughs> preparing in, intentionally asso- disassociating myself with everyone for a long time. Forever, yeah. 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 People yeah. are like, "Oh, I think I met you with this thing." I'm like, "I don't remember. I, I just tune tune it out, man." Yeah, when we did meet Ben in real life, we had lunch with uh, Ben Shapiro out in mm-hmm. L.A. Uh, last That's year. Pretty sweet. He says "fuck" like 30 times a sentence. Yeah. He's a really funny, sharp guy, and uh, I don't know how he keeps it together on camera, though, because I have to like, if I'm doing something outside of Drinker Bros that requires me to not say "fuck" the whole time, mm-hmm. I've, re- I've got to mentally prepare for it. Like for yeah, 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 yeah. I've done several radio shows where they had to use the button on me. You know, like, Damn, my bad. <laughs> Did I'm they really? Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, and I, and I just sound like I'm sorry, man. I'm Matt's actually getting a lot better at it too. Yeah, like, yeah you could tell. And he's got it down. In his earlier interviews, he would be like about to say something, be like, "Yeah," and then. Uh, there would be like a fucking Family. three second pause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, there, that was a fuck right there. That's yeah, what that was a fuck on now the Now he's of your pretty lips. fluid, so I guess it just takes time. Yeah, with you, um, I, I went to a couple of your uh, speaking gigs, and yeah. you weren't afraid to let it fly. You were like, man, these motherfuckers are going to come after you and uh, everything. Yeah, well, else. It's, it's, it's kind of that thing, dude, where, look, I'm talking to my dudes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, why, would I, why would I sugarcoat that? I'm talking yeah. to guys that are like me who've been through what I've been through. And if I feel like I want to throw an F-bomb, I throw it out there. I don't care. And, and, and it's just how I've always been. Even my social media, my mom texted me, like, stop cussing. I'm like, whatever. Yeah. I love you, mom. But but I just, you know, when, when I'm putting a video out there that does, means it's trying to be as real as I can be, that's the realest you're going to find me, dude, is just being myself. And so, uh, yeah, all my speaking engagements, I don't hold back. I don't care who's in the room. I honestly, I do try and, like, <laughs> not – make it a whole fuck fast you know what i mean like blah, 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 you know but but there's times where i think it's relevant and so i say it and sometimes you know in jest you just throw it under your breath whatever the case and so um yeah I don't, i'm not worried about censoring censoring that stuff at all no fuck that we <laughs> we went to uh that that thing last what was it november yeah we had to give a speech at uh we were on a panel with a bunch of fucking nerds <laughs> from uh silicon valley <laughs> it was me him and jared on a panel with a bunch of fucking google, silicon valley google. facebook yeah google facebook and we were just like saying fucked up shit the whole time i mean it, i opened with epstein um and i was just <laughs> like look guys uh we're all here today obviously because epstein can kill himself and uh and the look of shock, and then we just went on a tirade after that. Like uh, it was really. Oh my goodness. I think at some point I said, "Fuck, I'm not supposed to be swearing." Yes. Like, yeah. oh. but they had paid us before walking yeah, in, so we, like we, we had good, the checks, yeah. and it was like, we were eh, good. you can't really do anything now about it." You're a great public speaker, by the way. Is that uh, something you're going to get you, back man. into? It's, yeah, I'm still doing it. You know, obviously, right now it's kind of it's kind of dead, but I've been working on some new material and, and and new direction. You know, I'm starting to work on some leadership stuff. Um, you know, it's funny, dude, all these, and I'm, this is the first time I'm saying this out loud, but, uh, there's all these huge, like life coaches out there, right. Mm-hmm. And these big time dudes. And I'm not talking like Jocko. Jocko is a dude that I respect in the space doing his thing. Right. Because he comes from somewhere with a background and experience, but then you have like the top 10 dudes out there that are like these life coaches all came from real estate, which throws me the fuck off. Yeah. Right. We're like, Oh, you're talking like, about Gary V and his fucking useless platitudes. Like if you don't like a job, just quit. That's easy to say with the fucking $2 million winery you inherited that started your fucking empire. Fuck face. Yeah, yeah. Dude, it's, Jesus it's not Christ. even him. Go deeper, bro. There's others like, and I'm not talking bad about the dude, some guy named Garrett White or something like that. I think there's a handful of these dudes who mm. started from real estate, made their bank, and then you flip that bank into the marketing strategy of doing life coaching. Mm-hmm. These motherfuckers are wealthy as fuck. Yeah. And oh, what yeah. frustrates me is like, that's not the guy I'm going to take leadership skills from. You know what I mean? It's probably going to be a guy like Jocko. It's probably going to be a guy who's actually probably served some dudes in combat and fucking moved dudes through some hasty ass shit and then got them out alive. Right. That's the guy I want to follow. And so, you know, I've been working on some, some, some leadership stuff I want to do. I want to bring some guys to me and we'll do a, 
you know, a weekend of, of, of getting fucked up for a while and building them up and, 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 and breaking them down and building them up and, and doing some shit like that. Because I think it's better to learn leadership from people who's actually led men in combat than it is from someone who's just sold a bunch of fucking houses and made their money. Yeah, I agree. I mean, most of these things that, you know, we get invited to or we speak at or whatever, it, it's a bunch of people who don't really have the experience you're hoping for, you know, when you're just yeah. like, hey, man. Uh, why the fuck should I listen to you? It's, it's a, a bunch of buzzwords. Yeah, it's that like they that. Uh, heard. What's that quote? Don't take uh, advice from someone, that, or don't take criticism from someone you wouldn't take advice from. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, like, dude, it's like showing up to the gym and your personal trainer is fat as fuck. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> right? I've like, seen. Being honest. Go go to Instagram and type in. Just search for like the hashtags like uh, Fit Mom and shit like that. Yeah. Or or Life Coach or any of that stuff, and look at some of the results that pop up. It's hilarious well people yeah, are making a living off of just speaking essentially what's well, like dumb life coach. dumb yeah, people that, are making they're like a little bit smarter than the real dumb people yeah it's like the seven circles of hell and the people that are on the very outside are getting you know all their money taken people on the inside are like oh i'm a little bit smarter than them i can take their money right <laughs> and the thing is is that there's a market for it right i think that's actually the future of, of being able to use your skill set whatever it is and teach other people that skill set mm -hmm. through video or whatnot right and, and the problem is is that the people that are doing it now are just the people that are willing to do it, right? And they have just enough confidence to do it, and now they're making a living off of it. And the people that actually are the experts are probably the people who should be, haven't like figured out how to do that yet. So when they do, they're gonna fucking crush all these people that have no real skill, you know. But right now, everyone's kind of watching and like, oh shit, why is that guy teaching leadership, or why is that guy a fitness guy? I like watching fitness dudes that are jacked. I'm like, okay, that dude knows something. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like I want to see a dude who's jacked who also served several years in combat and has a bad back like me. That's the guy I need to follow because I need to figure out what the fuck he's doing right. Yeah. Because yeah. I can't figure it out myself. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you what it is, dude. It's those primo drugs, brother. Uh, that's the good <laughs> shit. Yeah, but it's also being able to work out four to five hours a day. It's true. Well, dude, if, if you're the rock, remember we talked about this before, Ross. Like, rock has a team of like eight who are keeping him in shape. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. Big Poppy has eight kids. I can't do that. You no, know what I mean? No. <laughs> I, I, I don't know a real dad, a re like a real dad. Who can spend four to five hours a day working out like that? Um, and oh, by dude, the way, I would love to get there. Uh, same, but there was that rock clock uh, that we were talking about. Where you, <laughs> I could... had it. I downloaded it for about a week, <laughs> and it was like, "Hey, man, live like the rock. You can do all this shit." Yeah, you can. Yeah. You, I definitely have time for three to four hours of workouts and consuming twelve to fifteen thousand calories a day for sure. I've got time. You guys got time for yeah, that, right? Four. What are you, some kind of piece of shit? Yeah, there's like, no, no way. Come on, man. I'm not waking yeah. up at four unless my house is on fire. Yeah, no, yeah. You, you have to have a, an expendable probably 30, 40 K a year just on fitness, right? On oh, it's got to be more than that, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. Just his just yeah. his fucking meal plan. Like he when he's oh, him. Oh, his is through the roof. Don't yeah. get me wrong. But I'm saying just the average dude. I have oh, to have yeah. all my bills paid and not have to fucking work nine to five. Then I could probably start putting some time away for fitness and yeah. then then I risk injury and all the other bullshit that goes on top of that. My old mm -hmm. ass, dude. It's a it's hard, bro. And I'm saying it's impossible. It's just not like the most important thing on my schedule right now, you know? Yeah. I'm trying to make sure your kids grow up and stay off a of fucking stripper pole is the most important <laughs> or not like, Oh man, I, I've, I've got it. Or if they're, they're, they're going to get on the pole, at least make sure they get the proper training for it. Yeah. Cause I've been seeing a lot of videos of people setting up the poles in their houses lately and falling off and, and hurting themselves. Down. Yeah. You don't ah, want to see that. Weird. I don't want to see a fucking stripper go down like that. They're too either. important for the economy. I agree. I agree. You know what I mean? Support I single mothers and all that shit. The things that I hate most in this world, Rocco, are still uh, strippers, supermodels, um, the, the strippers, supermodels, and playmates dying. Those three, like, it <laughs> I, fucking breaks me down. Porn dude. stars, too. Like, I'm not real upset about the COVID thing, but whenever I see a porn star die, that's it, man. I'm shut off for, like, a fucking week. When August <laughs> Ames died recently, I was, I went down dude. i don't even know who that is dude august Ames. Even... so she's no. a she was a porn actress that said she didn't want to do scenes with dudes who did uh bisexual scenes yeah, yeah, yeah. or gay scenes which is understandable because oh. they have a higher propensity for contracting AIDS. stds yeah oh, i guess i mean yeah. I, I i thought that women get to choose who they fuck but apparently not no dude you show up whoever's on the call sheet that's who you're boning that day yeah that's just not the business that i'm interested in you no. know that's just not that's not the one <laughs> that's not the one dude that's, i'll tell you what right now the ones who are making money acting in the quarantine are those holy shit man the the fan the only fans and all oh, that yeah. stuff that's going on right now a well lot. that's what it is like women women got only fans and they're doing really well with that and men are doing twitch well, <laughs> it's yeah like, yeah only fans is like the podcast for women it is, yeah. yeah. It's like it, anybody it, it, that has anything to say at all just starts a there's podcast. There's that other one, days. too. There's the other one's like Paradon or some shit. What's it called? I don't know. Pardon? Periscope? 
No, there's no, another that's little subscription one. based kind of thing. It's oh, called like uh, fuck. Pr- part on Predator, something Patreon. like that. Patreon. Patreon. Yeah. Patreon. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can do stuff like that, and and, and women do are, are making money off that, and not even nudes, right? They're just they're making money off that, just just being there, I guess. But uh, dudes have to do the Twitch thing. I yeah. got a whole Twitch setup. I haven't even fucking done it. Now. Jared's like, been ready. doing it with his uh, flight simulator game, and there's like eight to ten thousand people watching it every goddamn night. He does it every night, and then they're and tipping him. Yeah, it's they're, like they're, it's, no, it's bro, insane. Are you man. kidding me? It's a fucking career these yeah. days. And I'm Matt, like, my Matt's son been, tell me like, Dad, I want to play video games and make money. I'm like, shut up. There's no fucking way. And now I'm like. Oh fuck, son! Get on the goddamn sticks, son. Yeah, Train. Matt's been doing it. Yes. Matt's been playing Call of Duty. Yeah, Dude, I'm gonna fuck it. My money. son's gonna. It's gonna be a Olympian fucking video gamer. It's possible now, I guess. It yeah. is possible, it's- man. And like I, when I, uh, my kid just finished kindergarten, and he, gra- he had to graduate from the driveway. You know, the, the teachers yeah, drive yeah. by. Yeah, my son did thing. the same to eighth grade. Yeah, but they you. They, they give you the, like this little apple to write down what they want to be when they grow up on it. And, dude, I want to be a YouTuber. And that was well, like it, 90% of the kids in kindergarten were like, I want to be a YouTuber. It's a different world, man. TikTok has changed things, bro. It is. Like, Are you on it? You're a dad. Nah, Are you on TikTok you know, yet? It's funny, dude. I've been, I was on Musical.ly before it was cool. Mm. Musical.ly eventually turned oh, into yeah. TikTok. So I think I have an account. I haven't done nothing with it. And I haven't downloaded it since the, it kind of went crazy. Um, I don't plan on it. I really don't. I, I, dude, it's enough just trying to deal with Instagram and Facebook yeah, and no Twitter, sure. dude. And trying to keep those <clears throat> somewhat fucking interesting for people. And, I agree. And, and, yeah. and, like, and then I have my podcast fucking Instagram that I forget the fucker exists. So then I just post weird ass memes and shit. Mm. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like <laughs> that, all that shit in itself is, is a fucking full time job. So I don't need another one of these motherfuckers. And then I have to sit there and conceptualize what's going to be funny. Like, fuck off, dude. I'm good. I don't want to do that shit. Not only that, but like TikTok, I feel like there should be an age limit on there. Like, hey, man, if you're past, you know, 22 years old, like it shuts off. And you automatically have to join Instagram. Like, I disagree. It seems like a lot of kids. I disagree. I think that there's way too many kids over there, first of all, and it's irritating because of that, but uh, it's Vine, basically. It is, like, dude. It's, it's and another Vine, and, and Vine, was Vine dope. died. Vine, Vine died. And Vine was dope, and Vine died. And, and yeah. you know, when that died, all those fucking Viners fucking had to figure out their lives, dude. Yeah. You know, and then now TikTok is a thing. Dude. Did you see that fucking TikTok that ruined that Marine's life? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, like how God, he was a fucking bro. E6, man. How do you what let that happen? What was the backstory to that? The back- no fucking clue. I, I stopped reading it. Dan, tell us, please, because I, I fucking didn't even read this shit. I felt so bad for this dude. So I, he's in the background, and homegirl is. She's like, she's doing that uh, uh, classy, bougie, bougie, sassy song, yeah, right? Yeah, and yeah. the stupid TikTok dance <laughs> that goes along with it. But she replaced the words with, he's a Marine. He does this and that. And he's just standing there, parade rest in the fucking background. Dude, Bro. why the fuck? Like, you, if, 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 if your wife comes to you and says, hey, we're going to do this. Like, oh, yeah, okay, what's up? And then she does that. It's like, delete it or divorce. It's one of those two things because yeah. I can't move forward in life. But in uniform, in uniform, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even play, bro, because it's like you have the tendency. Like, look, social media, dog. That shit went everywhere. It's like too easy to get famous. Everywhere. It's too easy yeah. to get famous these days. You yeah. gotta, you no. gotta calm the fuck, fuck down. Yeah. Like, if my wife said, "Hey, babe, I think it'd be great. If you can, can you get into Gilly outfit, and I'm gonna do a TikTok?" I'll be like, oh, "I'm sorry, babe. No, no. I'm <laughs> not think fuck with my career. I think no. the Department of Defense needs to open a new uh, chapter of the FRG, and it's women." Who actually are spouses, male, male or female, that actually know the military and know the culture and know what can and can't go, and then you just well, you, you, know, you submit your yeah. shit to them. Like, hey, could this go? I'm like, no, and they approve it. No, Look, yeah. they should just not approve. I don't know. They shouldn't approve anyone in uniform doing silly ass shit, gimmick shit. I just think it's weird. Yeah, it's uh, weird. You know, I think people are using it for marketing. Some cops are doing their thing on social media, and some of the shit's funny. But you know, I think it's just it, there's a little. Does it? Do you lose professionalism when doing that? I don't know. It's kind of fucking. It's this weird gray space where if it was me in uniform, I wouldn't fucking ever do some fucking weird ass shit no. in uniform because that's just who I am. But now it's a new market where, I don't know, fuck it. It's different, dog. It's a different world we live in. Yeah, I'm gonna tell Georgia to mark this time code. We'll put that video in right here for the oh, everybody who's subscribed on YouTube. Is it so fucking cringy that she had to come out and release a statement apologizing uh, or are going after the people that were making fun of it was, her boyfriend. Yeah, it was too far. She's like, I'm supporting my husband. What's so wrong with that? Like, okay, I get it. But your husband is a professional motherfucker because he's an E6 in the Marines. Not easy to get to, bro. And then, too, to have that and stand there in parade dress while she does this goofy-ass fucking dance. Look, your relationship, cool. I know you love him, whatever the fuck. But he should have been like, yo, this feels wrong. <laughs> this feels fucking wrong. Well, there was a uh, look on his face that said that the whole time. Like, he's stone-faced the entire time of, like, God damn it 
Um, yeah, like she I, was why did I say yes to this? I, yeah, you could tell in his mind. He's like, God damn it, she's so hot, though. Like, I should probably not do this, but I'm going to let it happen. Hopefully, it'll be her and her six friends that see it. And then, <laughs> That's what it is. Like, she had six friends. He goes, who gives a fuck? No one's going to see this shit. <laughs> then he's like, oh, fuck. But why is he standing at views views later? rest? Why? Dude, it's, he, he probably thought that was the military thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> The military, military bearing, dog. The military bearing would be to knife hand the fuck out of this woman into submission. Uh, Don't even uh, talk. Just keep knife handing her until she lies down on the ground and goes to sleep. She's hot, though. No, man. she's not that hot. She's pretty hot. No, she's, she's pretty not. hot. By the way, breaking news. Uh, Donald Trump has been suspended from Twitch. Wow. I didn't know. From, he was on Twitch or Twitter? Yeah. Is that Twitch. Wait. Twitch. Well, well, well. Uh, apparently, looks like he won't be my friend. <laughs> Definitely not uh, Twitter. If he got suspended from Twitter, not you would, Twitter. You would see a meltdown from a human being that we've never seen before, I think. Donald Bro, Trump. I, I think he would probably drop bombs. And yeah. you're like, wait, yeah. what? Can you do yeah. that for Twitter? Like, well, we'll <laughs> yeah. see. I, I think. Look, man, I'm not saying anything bad. I'm just saying. Uh, you can't remove him from Twitter because you know you would cause fucking a lot of hell. But as to it would be weird for them to take that political stance, right? For Twitter to make that decision would be really fucking weird. And not like they haven't already; they've kind of fucked with a lot of conservative fucking party uh, yeah, no uh, Twitters. <clears throat> but then on the same aspect, like bro, you're the president. I need a little bit of professionalism out of you, bro, because man, what the fuck? I'm not a fan of his his Twitter, or I didn't know he had Twitch. So apparently, they're saying uh, he's been temporarily suspended from uh, Twitch for hate speech uh, involving old rallies. So uh, and it was the oh one where he God. called uh, Mexicans coming over the border rapist, apparently. That's the one he got suspended for. I mean, that was like he was referring to ago. specific individuals then. That seems like a weird that's, stance to take. That's this the point. problem I have, yeah. dude. Right? Like I'm a psychological operations fucking uh, uh, NCO at one point in my military reserve career. And, you know, you see a lot of the psychological operations techniques being used in media, left and right. It don't fucking matter, right? They're, everyone's using that style of shit mm -hmm. to, to draw your hearts in and then fucking piss you off and then make you fucking post some fucking angry-ass rant and then realize that you didn't really fully read the article and you're just fucking popping off. This is all psychological operations fucking techniques, dude, right? That's all they're doing. And that's why you have people that say, if you vote for Trump, you're racist. We're like, ah, I, don't, I wouldn't necessarily say that, right? right? And they're like, oh, Trump hates Mexicans. Ah, I wouldn't necessarily say that either. Being half Mexican, I'm going to tell you, like, definitely they've used his words and flipped them on him. And it's really easy to do that with that dude, right? Because he mm -hmm. says some shit. And you're like, okay, it's easy to use his fucking words against him. And so it's this really uncomfortable thing. And then flip side, you know, you know, the left and the right, they're they're both doing it. Like both, all parties are fucking playing this fucking game. Yeah, they're and, all and that's, why, that's why we're so divided, dog. Right? You got you're trying to get the world to fucking choose one or the other, and the only way to get that to happen is by fucking pissing both sides off and making them fucking divided. Yeah. Well, there you go. Now you have it. Yeah, yeah. it's a, it's it's an interesting uh, from a psyops point of view because if you're the Democratic Party, for exa example, this is just one example, you could say something that really pisses off. Republicans and you do two things one you piss off the other side and they start talking shit which makes your people react to them talking shit and yep. then the other thing is you put your people in a position where they have to defend indefensible ideas like stupid shit because mm -hmm. like, yep. nobody wants to go outside their party to criticize shit yeah. that's why well, I, dude, I catch so much yeah. heat for that because I fucking light everybody up every single day yeah, I, I just don't even play the game anymore, right? Like, they won't. You can't antagonize me. I don't care what the fucking thing you post. I'm, I'm not biting, you know. And you know, there was a post the other day saying, uh, you know, the Trump rally in Oklahoma has caused an uptick, uptick in freaking COVID tests. And then it, on the same exact publication, an hour later, says it has not been proven that protesting yeah. has has caused an uptick in COVID nineteen. We talked yeah. about that Thursday. It no shit. Yeah. And, and it's it, like one yeah. bullet, and then the second subheading is like, right. oh, we don't same, know what's happening. Like, get the right. fuck it's out like, of here. Are you not intelligent enough to just pick that apart yourself? Because yeah. that's what we need to do, right? We as, as people need to sit and be like, wait a minute, that's kind of fucked up, you know? <laughs> well, that's, we that's CNN, and it's not like Fox isn't guilty of it. Every single news agency is full of shit. They all are, uh, right? But, that's what I'm saying, left and right. Yeah. They're all fucked. But speaking of CNN, Jake Tapper's a real cunt, isn't he? Yeah, fuck, oh, man. God. Are you allowed to talk about this? Look, dude, it has nothing to do with me. I can just tell you the backstory of what's going down. Yeah, I can tell you, like, Go yes. ahead. So, tell the audience. Because this is, this we're is, gonna launch like a fucking full on boycott of this movie. Yeah. You know, you could probably Completely. get Jake Tapper on here to talk to him about it. That that actually, you could probably get Roma Shea to talk about it too. But maybe not because I think there is some legal action happening. I, mm. I'm not look. I can't confirm or deny. I just to, to for, truthfully, I don't know. But I know there's a lot of bad uh, potential blood. I guess. So you got you got 
The Outpost. It's a movie that just released its um, its trailer on YouTube. You can check it out. It's actually a pretty sweet trailer. Mm-hmm. And The Outpost is uh, a movie about um, a mission that happened, and actually two Medal of Honor recipients were were, were awarded from this uh, this battle. And essentially, they're in they're in the this this small little outpost in Afghanistan that was getting overran. Crazy thing about it is the government knew this is really compromising position, and there was no reason to really hold it anymore. It had no tech a tactical advantage on the enemy for us it really was just a really bad spot and for some reason they just continued to, to try and they, they made you know, they made a fucking uh, uh a cop a combat outpost out of uh a kill box essentially is what they yeah, fucking did exactly, like, what the, exactly. like that's the place if i was trying to funnel traffic somewhere to light people up and do like an ambush that is exactly where i would want everybody right. and, to and be. dude it's it's below the air, surrounding area yeah. it's just the worst situation Which, you can have no line of sight for. they're all shooting down at you and you can't get good cas in there without them right. getting fucking knocked out by rpgs it's bullshit right and so existed. so from this mission you have you know Clint Romache is one of the medal recipients and and another gentleman who's another a medal recipient and from this really crazy story i read the book if you read i read Clint's book and Clint's book is called Red Platoon it's a fucking beautiful book and the way he did it was so honest. It, actually, so honest where it was almost emotional to read. It was almost like, wow, did you have to say it like, in detail? Yeah. And I asked him about it. And he said, is the only way to pay the full respect to my to my brothers is, is to tell the story as real as possible. Now, he did soften some of the truth for some of the families that didn't want to, to get the, allow him to be too gritty about the mm-hmm. truth. Mm-hmm. And so he, he just respected the family's wishes. Throughout the whole time of writing this book, he respected the family's wishes, and he actually had the family involved in the process of telling the story, right? And so that's the cool thing about what Clint did. And then when Clint did that, I believe he sold the rights or, or he's working with a big production company in Hollywood with, for the rights of the book. And as that's getting figured out, uh, it's Jake George Tapper. Clooney, right? It's George Clooney's I believe, company. I believe it's George Clooney it or is, something yes. to that Smoke effect. House. It's a big name. It's Smoke a big House. name. It's George Clooney, yeah. yeah. And so then you have The Outpost, which is written by Jake Tapper, who is a CNN, uh, I don't know how, what you want to call him. Uh, what Reporter, do they call that? analyst. Reporter, analyst, you know, yeah. and who comprised a lot of the information from this mission and wanted to do his own version of it. And I say his own version. He wrote his story called Outpost. If you read both books, it's a, it's a very similar uh, portrayal. He actually used a lot of the context. What it feels, he used a lot of the context from Red Platoon to, to help, you know, solidify, you know, some of the, the, the true stories on the outpost, yeah. which is, it is what it is, whatever the case. And so me being in acting, um, I'm always looking for these roles that I think would be awesome. Um, and, and I've always wanted to play Gallegos. Gallegos is a character who's a big Hispanic man, who's kind of a really, really tough dude and is a great leader. Um, unfortunately lost his life that day uh, during during this battle. Um, I thought it'd be really cool to pay the respect to him and playing that character as best I possibly can. And and I felt like it'd be cool to play because I've been to combat. I've you know, I've I've kind of been in experience, not his terrible experience, like a terrifying experience, but I want to be there and I want to play that character for myself and for him. And so I hit up uh, Clint and he said, dude, let me talk to the family, see how they would feel about it, and blah, blah, blah. And all in all, it's like it's it's a good it's a good feel. I potentially will have an opportunity to audition for this role when it comes down to it. Mm-hmm. By coincidence, I get a fucking call from the fucking people producing Outpost looking for someone who can play Gallegos. No way. That's some really underhanded shit. Bro, weird as shit, right? Do and they so, know? I mean, it's not weird. Well, side know? Well, I don't think it's I weird. Did, it's I, just underhanded. They did that intentionally. They're, do, they're I don't doing, know. I don't know. I can't. I'm not. I can't say that, right? I can't say that. I can just. I can just tell you what happened. And so I get the the sides. I start studying it, and I'm realizing this isn't Clint's movie. This is the outpost. This is the other guy. This is like all the stuff I've heard about. I'm like, okay, cool. Let me call call Clint. And we talked about. It. He goes, look, man, um, it's your career. Do whatever you want. And I kind of felt like, nah. I love Clint. He's a good buddy of mine. Mm. I'm gonna step away from this one. And I just completely washed, walked away from it. Right now to see the movie's done. To see some of the actors that are on it were, you know, very respectable actors, and it looked like it actually did a really good job. Actually, one of my good Ranger buddies was the tech advisor for that movie, and I love the dude, right? And so I have no bad blood to say about that Outpost movie, but I do know it's a really weird to see Jake Tapper create a movie, and then on the other side, you have Red Platoon wanting to make that same exact story. You know, and I know this has kind of happened before in the past. I can't pinpoint, but I there's similar stories that are like this. Ross, we were talking before. Yeah. What are the other two movies that are similar? To that same exact story, two different rights or two different writers, whatever the fuck, yeah. and they come out very oh, similar. Oh, like so, Paul Blart, Mall Cop, and uh, the one that Seth Rogen was correct. In. Yeah, yeah. Same uh, year. Mall Cop's the same year. Um, Prefontaine was the one 
that oh, I was, yes. dude, because that was, I was waiting for that. I was waiting for that, that biopic and I was so fucking amped about it. So there was one with Billy Crudup and there was one that Tom Cruise, uh, Tom Cruise produced uh, with Jared Leto. I mean, two yes. unbelievable actors. The movies, so uh, it was uh, Without Limits. That was the really oh. good one. The Jared Leto one yeah. fucking sucked. And it was terrible. Yeah, Without both Limits them, was incredible, bro. But both of them came out within you know six to nine months of each other and both failed. Because you have these competing trailers and you hear these stories that you're saying right now. And it fucks over both movies. And it's just like, all right, how do we get this wrong? The other one that was, uh, we, I almost did at my company, was Pele. Um, and so this woman came in and she had the rights to Pele. She had $50 million to make this movie about Pele. And it was just like, oh, my God, this is incredible. That should be one of the biggest movies worldwide that ever of existed. Of all time. Like, I, honestly. Agree. Yeah. And so yeah. uh, if you get the right guy to play him, like it, Idris it, Elba or somebody like that, somebody exactly. that's really good character actor. So it was one of those things where this woman left the office and she look, she showed us the you know, she had the paperwork from Pele and all this other stuff. And I turned to my partner and my producing partner and said, this is too good to be true. I was like, there's no way somebody else doesn't have the rights to Pele. And yeah. uh, we called around and got in touch with somebody who was doing another Pele movie. He had bought the rights. And they were like, hey, man, I'm going to give you a heads up. Pele gets rocked. And he's probably given his life rights to like 12 people. <laughs> and he goes, you'll, uh, be in, you'll be in lawsuits forever on this. And I was like, what? Damn. Uh, yeah, but I got the heads up. And sure enough, um, I think it was Brian Grazier who had the rights to it. Um, but in a case like this, being an actor... Where you see a cast like this. I mean, this is, look, this is Orlando Bloom. Yeah. This is Scott Eastwood. Look, stop. let's stop, stop trying to make Scott Eastwood famous. Can we do that? Uh, uh, nah. I'm, I'm torn on this. No. Uh, Caleb Landry Jones is really good. Um, and then you've got Rod Lurie directing this. Like, was there any part of you that was like, fuck? Yeah, you know, it's, it's like acting for me is not a money thing. Right. Like I'm really content with working nine to five and then mm -hmm. going and playing these roles, but they have to be roles where I'm super proud of, you know, and this is a role that I, I would be fucking ecstatic to play, but it wasn't enough for me to like to, be, to turn my back on, on, on Clint. For me, it's like when Clint's movie comes around, I, I just give me the audition and I hope to God I'm the best guy for it. Right. Because and, and for me, it would I would feel better in my heart and sleep better at night by doing it that way. But, yeah, dude, I did watch that. I did watch the previews and I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. You're like, this looks kind of good. Damn, yeah. dude. <laughs> and look, Clint's a friend of ours. Obviously, he was in range 15. He's been on the show a few times. Like greatest guy in the world. Um, but this is a hell of a cast here that's in this thing. It's supposed to come out uh, Fourth of July weekend. Uh, this movie, yeah. obviously with COVID, that's probably pushed and it'll probably have some form of online I'm curious release. To see. Or... I'm, I'm curious to see. Yeah. I, I just don't understand how uh, what, what Jake Tapper is doing here, to be well, honest. like I, It's not business. This is the man's life. This is like, a, yeah. this, this is like somebody yeah. getting raped and then you make a fucking competing biopic about their rape. Yeah. Like yeah. this is I, one I, of the most like... traumatic. This guy is going to walk around for the rest of his goddamn life with souls on his soul. You know what I mean? Like wait. It's it's journalism, right? Like I think he felt the story needed to be told and I think he had the the reach to to bring it to life. Um ethically, I don't I don't I don't personally agree, right? But like I don't know, bro. It's it's kind of a weird place, right? Um <clears throat> That's that's kind of the re big reason why, like, well, I don't know if I can do this project because it doesn't seem ethically correct. Mm -hmm. I'd rather do the story from the guy's mouth who was actually there. Yeah, I rather I rather allow him to tell it his way. Um, that's kind of my big problem with like Hollywood in itself and and and, and veterans, right? Like veteran stories. Hollywood likes to tell Hollywood's version of the story. Mm -hmm. I would love to see more veterans. Like you've seen some articles I put out there recently, Ross, about mm -hmm. you know we need to start telling our own story. We need to we need to be into the veterans. Uh, the veterans need to be into the Hollywood space more, more ingrained, so that we have more power in telling that story in in the light that we deserve to be told, instead of allowing Hollywood to do it itself. You know, like I just put out this big article and it did pretty well. But the the goal is to just to to identify that. Like, look, it's been a gap of almost thirty years of no veteran combat veteran experienced actors, directors, writers in the mix, being able to tell the story authentically. Yeah. yeah. Okay, man, you got fucking medal of honor recipient, freaking, um, God damn it. He, he, he did to hell and back. What was the movie, the movie to hell and back the, the, uh, Audie Murphy. So Audie mm, Murphy is a yeah. Medal of Honor recipient and then became in, got into acting. They wanted him to tell his own story. He did to Helen back and he did, I believe, 22 other films after that. I mean, how can you talk about post-traumatic stress and have an actor really get into a character of post-traumatic stress without actually ever experiencing post-traumatic stress? Mm. In my opinion, you can have post-traumatic stress in many different ways, but I just think it's it would be 
a better uh, received film by the veteran community by having someone who has the experience behind it, you know? And so that's kind of like my big push right now is like, look, I'm in Hollywood wanting to freaking open those doors for more guys to see, like, we could all do this. Like this isn't mm -hmm. like Vince Vargas isn't the best actor in the world. Trust me. But Vince Vargas is one of the first guys there. That's an OIF OEF veteran and has mm -hmm. a significant role. And if I can prove that we deserve to be there, well, then I think we're going to have a lot more doors open for us. And then eventually we'll have directors, writers, and producers telling the story in the most honest way in their own light and not just what people perceive as honest truth. Yeah, I've yeah. heard the same thing from uh, from uh, Tyler, actually. Yeah, Tyler Gray's been on the show. Oh, yeah. A yeah. Bunch of, Ty, Tyler's always on the show. We have a bunch of guys from SEAL teams, uh, from CBS on here yeah, all, all the time. Team, yeah. And uh, yep. luckily, we've heard nothing but positive stories about them you know inviting actual seals up to be on the show and everything else yeah. and like I, that set has got it right um in my opinion well and that's taylor that's excuse me that's tyler's that's tyler's doing mm -hmm. right it is like, yeah when you, like you have a guy like him you have his there you can't deny this motherfucker's experience right that yeah. that itself is like so hollywood is so wrapped on the navy seal world right yep. the navy seal they want to hire seals right cool i get it they've done a really good job at marketing themselves and none of us else have, right? Rangers haven't, fucking mm. Delta hasn't, and Special Forces haven't, you know, maybe back in the day. But, and so, like, Tyler gone in there and shown them, like, look, I can do this. And he's done it, and he's done yeah. it well. And it not just in, in, not as a, not just as a, um, a tech advisor, but also as an actor, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. he's, well, also, fully as involved. A, also as a director now. Like, he's, right. As a director, you're right. Yeah, you're so right. You're, he, he's directed several now. I, I, the last, I was on set. Maybe what, what what month is this? Three months ago, four months ago. Yeah. And uh, I I didn't know what to really expect. Like I know Tyler and I know his background and I know like I've seen him on the show and shit, but I didn't know what to expect. Like sometimes when you see uh, tech advisors on on sets like that, it's just like oh fucking whatever. This is the guy that's yeah, making he's, sure he's that got our, his little chair and he sits there in the yeah, corner. You're just making sure <laughs> the fruit salad looks good when you're on fucking uh, class A's or whatever. But he. Like every fucking ten seconds, someone's like, "Hey Tyler, can you come?" Like the director of the show is like, "Hey Tyler, come look at this. Does this look right?" Fucking the set and set and uh, wardrobe are both doing the same thing. Uh, Boreanis, who's fucking directing a lot of the episodes now, is like, "Hey, does this look right?" All right, let's shoot it again. Like everybody, that's how it has to be. Yeah, yeah it does. Like if you right. want to get it right, and they're the only ones. I've never seen more realistic gunfighting on camera than on this fucking CBS TV show, which is kind of weird to say after all the movies that have been made. Over the it doesn't years. matter, man. So they've been hiring the same people for many, yeah. many years. Nothing. Look, there, I, we all love Dale Die, right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe Dale Die is a little dated, right? Yeah. Like, like Dale Die can probably not tell us how to enter and clear a room because it's not a world that he existed in. No, you he, know what I'm he was clearing jungles, not rooms. Right. Ex yeah. Exactly. And so my point of that is like, we need more Tyler's. We need more me's. We need more guys out there, um, and we need <clears> less seals. <laughs> <That's> just, <laughs> yeah, just because like I don't know. There's so many of them. There but are. Rem Remy's pretty good. He's been in there for a while, but oh, he doesn't Remy's really. Great. He doesn't really do any acting. He's just behind the scenes all the time for the most part. And, but he exactly, makes sure that's, that's he makes sure need, that right? other dudes get involved in the acting process. And I think that's why Tyler's kind of been going. Like he cares way more about directing and producing than he does about acting. And I think it's because he wants to get it to a position where he can actually influence everything that's happening. Right. That's and get, exactly. And do what you're that's what talking you want to be. Yeah. That's what we need to be. Like, look, I can't sit here as an actor and think I'm going to change shit. No, no. I got to actually be a producer, a, a showrunner. I got a, a writer. Mm. I got to do something big. And that's it. Like, so I'm the tech advisor for Mayans MC. Mm. And there's not a lot of times you need Vince Vargas to jump in there and show them Border Patrol, show them military or, or prison techniques, right? But when they do, it's cool. They, they say, hey, we need you on set today for this. We're mm -hmm. going to make, make sure it's valid. And that's a really powerful thing. It's important. And then there's times where we don't have the time to really make it the way we want to. And that's a, that's a little frustrating because you're like, man, I, I wish I could make this better. But budgeting, time, yeah. uh, you know, and all kinds of stuff. You know, Ross, you know, like sometimes it's just, it's just impossible to, to, to make it perfect. It yeah. is, and it's like there is some things you have to Hollywood just because of time, money, and light, where it's just like, dude, right. you're running out of daylight. All right, let's just shoot it and get in the fucking can. And get yeah, like that, uh, that new series, not new now, it's two seasons in, but that series with uh, uh, John Krasinski, the fucking Jack. Yeah, Jack Ryan. Jack Ryan series. Yeah. I think it was episode one or two of the first season where uh, a bunch of fucking dum-dums roll up on this uh, black site, right? where they're interrogating people and shit like that. And you see, like, three uh, three Green Berets on a fucking elevated position. One of them's a captain, and they're all fucking shooting M16s with iron sights on them. I'm like, what the fuck, man? You couldn't have yeah. taken... Like, I know the budget for that, this film. 
Right. And those weapons, the fake versions of those weapons, they cost like fucking two hundred bucks. You couldn't get those weapons? Are you fucking kidding me? Like, uh, it, what that is is that's your that's your your set designer not yeah. really having the knowledge, right, and not asking for assistance either. <laughs> and so it's like, hey, I got these rifles. You're like, and oh, the guy, fuck, the guy's <laughs> like, it's a it's a special forces captain, so a special forces team leader, and he's wearing like fucking daps and a neck collar and shit. Yeah. Like, he's yeah. got he's got yeah. a muzzle loader. He's just yeah. ripping off. Yeah. Death, yeah. Uh, here we go. Yeah. I'm surprised. It's the dumbest shit I've ever seen. Krasinski let that fly. He was in 13 hours. Well, 13 hours. I mean, all the guys were involved in that movie. Yeah, like, I enjoyed 13 hours. That's another, I guess, uh, other than SEAL Team, that's probably another one where the technical part of it couldn't have been, including the uh, the local nationals not being able to shoot. All of that yeah. was correct because they can't shoot yeah. for shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I, re- shit I really like that movie, movie man. Yeah, it, it was, was great. Good. I've watched that movie probably 15 fucking times, to be honest. I got emotional in that last scene when you did the, the, the little sign of relief, like the, uh, the you know, that yeah. you can finally breathe again with Tonto there. Yeah. I was like, uh, every time I watch it, I'm like, that's such a good scene. <laughs> yeah, where he's on his back laying out at the airstrip, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fucked up, man. Great film. Uh, we get some sponsors who pay for this whole shit wagon to be on the air. You know the rules, uh, Rocco. Uh, first and foremost, that. ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. 25% off everything in the entire store. Mattresses, sheets, pillows, adjustable bases, you name it, everything is 25% off. If you order a mattress, you get two free pillows with it right now. And as always at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. They got a 36-month pay-as-you-go program, no interest there, and it is all applicable with that 25% off savings. Uh, If we're going to be quarantined (laughs) for a little bit longer, might as well get something nice to sleep on and uh, make love to your lady on. Get that adjustable base and that that cooling mattress. That's what I got coming my way. For sure. You want to get her in the right position. Uh, And again, if you can prove that you've conceived a child. Correct. On a ghost bed, and then you show me the proof in a video in form. In a video form, uh, I will yeah. buy you a new ghost bed. Yes. Uh, ghost bed is allowed that. So yep. all you have to do is show the conception of your baby yep. on a ghost bed, and we'll get, we'll get you a free one. Yep. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. I don't think Next it's that big up. of a deal. No, I don't either. We got killcliffcbd.com. Uh, 25 milligrams of CBD in every single can. I drink a can of this shit every single night. Are you a CBD guy, Rocco? Uh, no, I'm not. I, I've heard a lot of great things about it. I've tried it. I, I definitely tried it, but I, dude, I guess I'm too busy to remember anything. Kill Cliff is the jam, dude. Uh, so it's drinkable. It's, it comes in a fucking can. Now look at this shit. Yeah. Really? I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to tell them to send me some. It's of that really shit. good. Yeah, this it's the best. They There's just, no energy stuff in it, right? No, no. So and okay, there's, good. There's no carbs and sugars yeah. and uh, 25 milligrams of CBD. They just sent Rogan a fucking refrigerator branded. No, fucking Kill Cliff refrigerator. I guess he's cooler than us. Yeah, he's way cooler than us. He got a fucking fridge. We didn't get a fridge. No, we didn't get shit. I mean, I got this fucking gold chain, but uh, it's been turning my neck green, guys. (laughs) The fuck? Go to killclipcbd.com today. (laughs) Use the promo code DRINKINGBROS for 20% off and free shipping. They'll ship it right to your house. I drink a can of this shit every single night. They get grape, uh, orange, kush, and mango. Last but not least, we got getroman.com forward slash drinkingbros. Boner pills, dude. Mm -hmm. Are you in the boner pill world yet? No, bro, but you know, and a buddy of mine, one of my sponsors for my podcast, he, they are, and it's pretty cool, man. I like, I like seeing guys uh, call me and be like, yo, how does it work? I'm like, I, I can't take it because I got a bad heart, but I heard it works really good. Uh, yeah, dude, amazing. I'm telling you, we've, the first, uh, after the first month of us advertising this shit, one review, like, I think somebody put it on, I don't know if it was, if they DM'd us on Instagram, if it was an actual review on iTunes, and it was like, hey, uh, my wife is super pissed off because I've been hard for four days. Yeah. And just been blasting her out this whole time. <laughs> just like, killing her, dude. And GetRoman.com forward slash drinking bros. Free yeah. doctor visit. Mm-hmm. Free doctor visit and uh, free shipping there. Um, so what you do is you just go on and take a little online quiz. You don't have to go in front of your female doctor and, and tell your dick don't work. Uh, you can just get it shipped to your house in a discreet package. Your kids, your wife, your mistress, your uncle won't know that uh, you have it. In case you want to sneak up on your uncle and fuck him in the well, middle Well, they'll figure it out eventually. Jesus. At the f- <laughs> like, they're not going to know it first. No, Brocco. This is not a family show. It never has been. And <laughs> you, were like, I, been. you were like, dude, I got to get the fuck off of this show. This, <laughs> there's no way this is going to continue in this current form forever. After episode 100, I was like, I'm done. I love you guys. <laughs> But I'm done. Haunted me forever. <laughs> Go to GetRoman.com forward slash Drinking Bros today. You got anybody? Who do you got these days? Are you working with anybody right now sponsorship-wise? You got anything new coming you know, out? No, I got my sponsors on my podcast. But w- w- the biggest thing is, you know, I'm, I'm launching better, and I'm going to be giving away uh, a lot of shit. And it's going to be, you know, the money that we receive from that is going to be 
purchasing some major items for some nonprofits. We're going to be trying to buy a gym, straight up gym free for veterans in Salt Lake City. We're going to buy a couple taco trucks from our nonprofit so we can start working and making our own money for a nonprofit. Stop asking for for, for handouts. And at the same time, there's a nonprofit called Motorcycle Mission. So I've been partnering with them. We're having combat veterans build custom motorcycles from scratch. And so I'm going to do everything I can to raise money for them as well. So the next three months, I'll be pushing out. Uh, you guys are going to check out my social media. You'll see. It's, it's a veteran project. We're going to yeah. be doing a giveaway. It's big. I can't tell you yet. Next week, I'm going to be launching uh, a lot of the, the inside shit. But um, the goal is to just raise money for small nonprofits that don't have the means. You know, there's a nonprofit that, that wants to take veterans fishing. I want to buy them a fucking boat. Mm. That's the kind of shit I want to do is start helping a lot of the smaller organizations do big things. Is that what veteran stands for? Because I, I see better, the shirt on social yeah. media. You're wearing it today, right yeah, there. Yeah, it's, it's becoming a better veteran. Really, you know, the society has us down to be suicidal, um, you know, mental health issues, and just fucking broken. And I don't agree. I think we we focus too much on the negative side of a veteran, and we haven't highlighted a lot of the successful veterans that are in our circle, like you guys included. You guys already know some of our, our friends who are very successful and they're veterans. Mm -hmm. For some reason, they're not highlighted, and so I want to go around and start doing little videos and, and highlighting some of these badasses. And then as well as, you know, getting some support behind that. And that, that that goes with a lot of these nonprofits that need the help. And so Veteran is here to just be a positive influence in the veteran community. Better me, better community, pushing guys to just to do more and be better. Where, where can everybody get the T-shirt, by the way? Because I, I, I uh, love those shirts. Yeah, so these right here on vinnyrock.com, but they're going to be pushing over next week to veteran.com. And so you can go to veteran.com next week and check it out. And um, we have, man, there's tons of different concepts. Because it's a motorcycle um, giveaway, mm -hmm. I'll tell you that. No one really knows that, but it is. And there's going to be some motorcycle enthusiast shirts. That if you're not a veteran, you don't feel comfortable wearing veteran, you can get some of the motorcycle enthusiast shirts, as well as uh, oh, there's a ton of different veteran apparel that's going to be on there. I'm talking probably over 40 different designs. Why do you think they don't highlight more veteran stories? Dude, it doesn't create shares, bro. Like, it, it's this thing that we are in this world. Look at everything on the news is negative shit. It's how many people died, how many people are sick, how many people are not recovering. And it's never like, let's see the inspirational, motivational shit out there, right? For some reason, it's not shared well. It's not, it's not as well received as the drama. I don't know why. Well, like, I, think it's, I think it's because uh, people are often – kind of reserved about sharing their stories and shit like that and also and veter I get it. veterans in general were not very good self-promoters because it's like oh for sure when and it's cold outside the, the average toxic. <laughs> oh yeah for sure well against each other for the most part yeah correct like it's correct. When, when when the average person is outside and it's cold they're like oh fuck it's cold and yeah. a veteran is like for the most part they're like eh I mean, no it's I, not I, I, I mean, what do you what do you what do you fucking sissy? yeah what are you pussy uh but it's like uh there's a very powerful role that that we have to play as leaders and particularly these days with things so fractured there's a story that um i first heard on the west wing and it's a bit, the guys are talking about alcoholism and he's talking about a guy that's in trouble so he's like i walk uh this dude falls into a ditch right or mm -hmm. a fucking a big hole in the ground well whatever you want to call it and uh his buddy walks by and he's like hey what's up fucking yeah. carries on he, he's like gives him some kind words of advice like hey man sucks that you're down there sorry thoughts and prayers and then uh a priest walks by and he's like oh, i'll say a prayer for you and he leaves the doctor comes by he goes i'll write your prescription throws it down in the hole then uh you know his buddy from combat shows up jumps down in the hole he goes what the fuck are you doing now we're both stuck here and he goes yeah but i've been here before and i know the way out and that's a very powerful Beautiful. story that Beautiful. It, it's it's your service doesn't end just because you got out of the military you know, what yeah, I mean? you know, it's this it's this crazy thing, man. And you're you're preaching to the choir here. Like I wrote a book on my transition and it wasn't just military transition. And I had several transitions in my life and and I didn't write it for any reason. I don't care about New York Times best selling nothing. I know like the guys who needed this book are going to read it. Right. Like this, the small amount of dudes that that are willing to accept uh, some kind of mentorship, they'll buy it and they'll read it and, and they'll see like I've been there. You know, I'm sober now. I'm coming up on it's probably a year and a half now coming up on two years here soon. Right. No shit. Completely, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and it's for no other reason is I felt like the biggest hypocrite because every veteran I ever had a phone call with or was suicidal or struggling, almost every single one had a drinking issue, too. Right. And it's like, OK, cool. Maybe if we control the drinking a little bit, we can actually get down to the stem or the root of why you're fucked up. Right. What's what's going on in your life, whether it's financially, whether it's physically, whether it's your wife, what maybe your wife is because you're drinking. Right. All these different things. And then also find counseling for these dudes. Right. And a counseling that works. There's like 
multiple different styles. You can't put me in a room with a bunch of other motherfuckers and say, like, you're going to get better. No, no, no. That makes me worse because fuck all these dudes. Yeah. Right? In my head. Yeah. It's, how I, it's how I receive counseling, right? Mm. And so with that being said, I talk all about that in that book. And, and fuck the book. I, I want to talk about that to every fucking veteran I shake hands with. I'm down to fucking – I answer every message that's ever come through my phone or my fucking Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is. And that's what kind of better it is. Um, you know, we raise the funds. I want to travel to every city fucking in America and shake hands and talk to every veteran and see how can I guide you in the right path to help you get better, whatever it is. Do you need mm-hmm. counseling? Let me find free counseling for you, right? You need, you need some motivation? Well, look, I have, I'm going to bring three sp- motivational speakers who've done it, guys you probably never heard of, not, not us guys, right? Not, not fucking – Article 15, Black Rifle Coffee, not fucking Grunt Style, not, none of these fucking other dudes. It's people you haven't heard of but have been there, right? You know what yeah. I mean? Because we're, we're, we're these figures, dude, and, and people probably think it's come easy for us and it hasn't. But you know what? It's not from, I don't want to glorify anything other than there's other dudes who have done it, who have been through it, and are now successful. And hear them out. You know what I mean? And that's kind of this weird space, man. Like there's not enough people telling the positive stories, right? There's not enough people talking about the doctors, the lawyers, the, the scientists that, you know, there's a scientist here and I, and I'm actually investigating more cause I want to make sure it's legit before I, you know, back anybody, but he, he has a, a somewhat of a cure for, for addiction. And it's, it's, it talk about something like a hypothalamus and it's not getting blood flow, blah, 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 shit that I don't understand. But I'm like, dude, why the fuck doesn't the world know about this, right? If we can help people with addiction, bro, that's that's a huge one, right? And he's supposedly, I mean, his team is supposedly getting put in for a Nobel Prize if this, if this, you know, the white pages and all that other shit in science, right? But that's the kind of shit that we need to put out there for the world, right? There's answers, you know, and and I just want to get down to the root of it. Look, I didn't get into acting because I give a fuck about famous. I didn't get into YouTube because I give a fuck about famous. I gave a fuck about having a bigger microphone to be a better voice for our community. That's now the inspiration. Like, the bigger I get in my ends MC, the bigger the microphone I have to help more fucking dudes find a fucking path. Whatever their new mission is, fuck acting. It doesn't have to be that. It could be woodwork. It could be horse riding. I don't give a fuck what it is. But if I can connect the dots for other dudes to connect them with other people who can help them, that's what I want to do. And there's something about that that motivates me, right? I wake up and say, dude, how can I help more motherfuckers, right? How can I connect more dots for people so they can figure it out? Yeah. And that's why I kind of started the better thing. I didn't want to keep pushing the same basic brands, these, these, these military brands. And they're cool. They're, there's a place for them in, the, in our community, fine. But it's not for me. I don't want to wear that shit, dog. You know what I mean? I want to wear something that I can be proud of, something that is pushing the positive fucking message, something that's challenging guys to have self-accountability and getting these fucking dudes some help. And so that's what the whole better in movement is going to be and trying to be. And it all comes down to the success of the first giveaway. If the success of the first giveaway does, if it just bumps the needle a little bit, I could probably focus on this 100% of the time and grow this to be something that might be the small ripple effect that starts the change in our fucking community. That's awesome. Yeah. It seems like today, nobody wants to hear positive stories though. Uh, and that's the but, shitty thing. It doesn't get clicks. Uh, yeah. It yeah. doesn't get clicks. It doesn't get uh, any news whatsoever. And you're like, man, I, I wish there was a place we could just go for positive news uh, throughout yeah. the day. But that doesn't exist. Um, hopefully it will. Um, and and you know, will it be successful? I don't know, man. We're in a kind of a morbid world, dude. Yeah. Uh, it's strange. It's strange out there. Uh, but let's get away from from uh, the negative. Let's, let's focus on the positive. You just had a child. Yes, I did, man. Baby man, boy. Congratulations. Thank you, man. It's been beautiful. You know, we um, it's that one that brings them all together, right? We're a blended family, right? My four. Mm-hmm. Remember, I was a single dad of four kids for a while. Um, met this woman who had her two. And we decided to have one together and kind of lock them all together because I'm very family oriented, man. It's important for me to have family dinner and sit at the fucking table and talk. Yeah. Right. And and as close as I'm raising my kids or trying to raise them, I thought it'd be like, look, now you now you're stuck no matter what. At the same time, we wanted to bring one together. Right. Sure. And so we went through the experience of IVF, which was fucking hell of an experience, like scary, crazy, financially fucking stupid. Right. Expensive as fuck. Yeah, how much and did it, it set you back? Because there's a lot of people that listen to the show. It's like 25K, man. That are thinking about going it, yes, through that. Yeah, 20, 20, 25K, depending on where you go. Yeah. Um, there's a place here in Salt Lake City, Utah, that it, it almost guarantees they're going to get you. It, unless there's something really dramatic, they're going to – your first attempt, you won't have to come out of pocket as much for your second attempt type of thing, mm, okay. right? Um, 
And then we have a guy named Dr. Hotelling here in Utah who's like the number one fucking dude dick guy, right? Like he can make your dick work, whether it's whether it's make sure you're fertile, having kids, all that shit, right? He's like the dude who has all these fucking accolades for this, right? And so he's the one who actually uh, received my specimen from my 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 balls. And He's talking and about then, cum. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to be scientific. Well, was it you or was it her? Do you know that? We both, dude. So we both had our, our she had her tube side and I had a vasectomy. Oh, right? after shit. Our, after our last, so instead of doing the reverse surgery, because reverse surgery, there's no guarantee, right? right? I had my vasectomy for fucking nine years, dog. I was like, I don't even know if these things work anymore, bro. And I'm on TRT, <laughs> right? Yeah. So I'm like, did I, I'm going to just fry them balls out so it might not work. Her On her, her, her case, she was going to be able to have babies, but it's a more invasive surgery to reverse mm, yeah. uh, tube t- uh, you know, a tubal. And so we decided, let's go around it. And so we did an egg retrieval for her. We did a specimen retrieval for me. And then what they do is they fertilize the eggs and they identify which ones are healthy. And then with the most healthiest egg, they only allow you to do one at a time here in Utah, maybe maybe for, for insurance reasons, for multiple other reasons, because the science is better. Mm-hmm. Um, the first one took, man. And because she's a healthy, you know, she's a healthy woman who, who could have a baby in any other time. But if, if it wasn't for her, her, her tubes tied. Um, yeah, man, the first try it worked. And yeah, it was about 20, 25 K for us, dude. And, and, um, you know, luckily the Mayans helped me with that as in, you know, the pay for that was really what I was focusing on paying that year. I'm like, we're doing this. We're having this baby now. Well, and that's a good idea. Worked, I, I, I like the fact that you guys uh, decided to have one together. I feel like if, if the Brady bunch had done that, then, uh, Robert Reed probably wouldn't have gotten AIDS and died. Probably. Probably. You know, yeah. So you're probably safe from AIDS now. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's how the father died, right? Yeah. He got AIDS. I, yeah, I didn't know that. Well, yeah. now you know. No one's half the battle. Uh, <laughs> it always is. Well, congratulations, man. So how many total kids do you have now? So we have a total of seven. Holy shit. And how old and dude, is the oldest funny, now? Dude. Oldest is turning 18. She's turning 18 soon. Is she going to college? That, that's the discussion, bro. We don't know. You know, she says she is, but she wants to go to college in like Italy. I'm like, you're out of your fucking mind. And so, you know, we're trying to figure that out, dude. She's, she's like the woman of unrealistic fucking dreams. I said, join the, I said, join the military and they'll give you everything you ever wanted. Yeah. You could get stationed now, um, at Vicenzo. Exactly. So, you know, we're, it's, it's the process right now of having an 18 year old girl who's going to go to college or wants to go to college. And we're going through the process, ACTs, you know, applying for colleges. Mm-hmm. What can I actually afford? You know what I mean? Um, Everything. So that's what my, my father experience right now is that, dude, going through that whole thing. Yeah, it's got to be wild to have a – because I've got two kids. It's got to be wild to have an 18-year-old and a 1-year-old. You know, like – Yeah, dude. It, you know, what's funny is, is – uh, I guess – I don't know. I don't feel it. You know, most people probably like, oh, it's a lot of kids. Like, dude, after four and raising them alone, dude, five with help – Six with help, seven with help doesn't it doesn't affect me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it's it's a really cool thing, dude. Think about this. During quarantine, bro, we couldn't go nowhere. These fucking kids had a damn party every goddamn day. They had fucking yeah. six kids in the house playing playing. We played sports, they have a trampoline, we played board games, we played drawing games, we played competition, we had scare games, like like who who can scare who the most in the fucking house, you know? Like <laughs> it's a fucking party in this motherfucker, you know what I mean? And so yeah. There's a good thing to it as well. Financially, it fuck, it's rough. Financially, it's always hard because they all go to a, a, a really good school out here, and, and I pay the money for that because you know I believe the education is important. But, yeah, it's a wild time right now, bro. Yeah, I can imagine. It's funny you say that about uh, the, having the kids in the quarantine because, you know, <laughs> I have two, but my, my youngest is one years old, you know, one and a half, and uh, he can't really play with the six-year-old. So it was like me and, and Jesse had to be his – best friend essentially so we had to go yeah. on the trampoline with him and do all that stuff and it was just man i was exhausted I, I was exhausted every day like, bro i was beat I, I come home from work and my wife's like oh my god it's your turn right because like yeah they they're all over her all day like with homework first and then everything else i mean it's just a mad time bro it's a it's a, it's a crazy time it, just trying to trying to keep mentally healthy kids you know at a weird time like this because then bro we had the biggest earthquake in utah history in the middle of all this shit holy shit and were you there for that 
Yeah, bro. And, but that ain't shit. I was there for fucking Northridge, dog, right? So I'm like, oh, I'm like, okay. And the kids were freaked. And I started like, you know what? I remember my time through Northridge and I know what they're going through. Mm. They're, they, they don't understand why the house rocked like that, you know? Yeah. And so that was, you have kids that are freaked out about earthquakes, kids that are freaked out about the end of the world's coming. You know what I mean? It was just a, it just, like I said, my goal was to keep them mentally healthy, happy, and trying to keep them entertained, man. Yeah, well, man. It's I, I slept, you know, that big one that was in, uh, in uh, wine country in Napa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yes. Actually, it was. I think the epicenter was actually Sonoma, but I was in Oakland at the time. I slept through that shit. Oh, uh, really? Like it was. Uh, I think it was like a six, six high six yeah, there, and then yeah. like when it reached us, it was like in the fives. I slept through this. Shit. I slept through two major no earthquakes up there. Northridge, Northridge earthquake. I mean, I lived in Northridge, bro. I, mm. my, that's my parents' house is still there. Dog, that changed my life. Like. I had post-traumatic stress from that. Like, so there's this weird thing before an earthquake hits. You hear this rattle in the house, like, like the wood settling. Yeah. Mm. Like, I hear that now. Yeah. I'm always like, <gasps> like waiting for this bitch to hit. You, I know, you know that exact about? sound, dude. I know that exact sound, and it's creepy because you're like, oh shit. And then you know it's coming, and then you can yes. feel the waves, right? Uh, yeah. Like just on the ground, and you're like, all right, well, how long is this going to last for, and what's the damage going to be? Yeah, crazy. Um, fortunately, I was not there in L.A. for like a big one, anything over like a five, you know. Um, but when it happened, you were like, holy shit, this could yeah. be absolutely devastating if it ever did hit. Um, and if it's yeah. going to, let's face it, it's going to be 2020. I already. Yeah. <laughs> Don't I mean, tell me that shit right now, bro. You know, uh, it's going to happen. Uh, uh, la last thing I want to ask you about is uh, how's Black Salt? Are you still there and you still doing hair there? Cause you had a barber shop uh, there last time. Yeah, I have I have Throwbacks Barber Company. No, we actually this week we're moving out and we have a location closer to the house. Um, Will wants to expand his tattooing; it's doing a lot better, and so we just kind of came to an agreement. Like I'm going to jump ship to a smaller spot. He's going to take over the rest of that, and so Will will still be there with Black Salt. Mm -hmm. I'm jumping and taking uh, Throwbacks Barber Company down the street in West Jordan, and um, it's a, it's a nice little small spot that. Bro, we're gonna kill it. It's in such a good area. Like new houses in front of us, houses to the left and right, schools nearby. I just I I feel really good about that. And you know, I don't really do much with the barbershop. I started it because I love barbering. I never had the time to go get my license. So uh me and one of the other barbers own it and we're just growing it. It's just another like it's just another income that could potentially just just be a couple thousand a month for me. Sure. Um and that's what you know, that's what it is, right? I'm trying to build all these little uh passive incomes here and there to just to make sure you know, the family's good in the future. Absolutely. Uh, you know, well, uh, Rocco, this is the point in the show. We get to the drinking bro of the week, which is someone who has helped you or inspired you. Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to this week? Oh my goodness, dude. It, they're not even on drinking bros. Go ahead. Is it cool though? Yeah, it's fine. It doesn't matter. So do you know Emilio Rivetta? He yes. plays, mm -hmm. he on, plays uh, Marcus Alvarez. Yes. Yeah, he's yeah. the best. I'll tell you what, man. Out of anyone I've worked with in Hollywood, I mean, they're all all these guys are my mentors now, right? All these guys mm -hmm. just kind of took me under the wing. But this guy has been the most honest, open, just humble dude I have ever met. And funny thing is, he's from a rival gang that my father was in back in the day. And so we've had all these cool really? talks about dude. He met my dad, he goes, Hey homeboy, you ever shot at me? <laughs> it's like, no, bro. And it was this funny, like it's just he's so real dude he's just one of the the coolest dudes and he's always been there for me for any questions in acting and i just love the love the guy and if it wasn't for him and what he did in sons of anarchy mm -hmm. we wouldn't have mayans mc mm. you see what i'm saying so i appreciate it there's nothing but gratitude for him the whole cast all fx and what they've done for me just just the fact that you know kurt Sutter, to be honest is the guy who gave me the chance yeah and so i appreciate that but once I got there, Emilio right there, Emilio, he um, he's the one who made sure that I, I didn't step on my own dick, man. So I appreciate that guy. He's isn't a he great a, fucking actor. Isn't he an too. Army veteran? He is an Army veteran, dude. Yeah. He is. People nobody know that. nobody yeah. knows that. Yeah. Oh, shit. Did yeah. You, is that how you guys hit it off on set? Dude, it's funny because probably months prior, I said, hey, I'm interested in auditioning. Um, I would love some advice. And he actually knew shit messaged me and gave me advice. Right? Back then my 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 handle was Big Poppy Official. Remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so then so then we go to the first meeting of all of us and then we go all go to barbecue at one of the guys' houses. And he sits there and he goes, Hey Rock, I know you. 
And I was like, from where? He goes, you messaged me. I was like, yeah. He goes, you big poppy official, aren't you? I was like, what the fuck? I was like, yeah, man, I just changed my name to be more professional. He goes, that's good, bro, because I was going to make fun of you for that. <laughs> how funny so, How funny is it that a 60-year-old fucking former gang member is now tech-savvy actor? Like, Oh, dude. Yeah, right? That's, that's really and funny. You guys got to watch his comedy. He's got some comedy on YouTube. His old school stuff. He started doing comedy back when he was still gang-banging kind of style, like – Bro, this dude is brilliant. He's one of the greats of our time that is just so underrated. And like I said, I just want to give him all the love, man. That's awesome, man. Well, shit, dude. It was great having you, man. Mm-hmm. I, you're one of my favorite people on the planet. And uh, congratulations on all your success. I'm glad the family's doing well. Uh, glad the, the, the baby boy is healthy. Uh, Thank you. And he, he's as handsome as can be. Uh, tell everybody where they can find you on social media. You guys already know it's uh, Vincent Rocco Vargas or hit me on Instagram at Vincent.Rocco.Vargas. Twitter is uh, at the real underscore Rocco. Um, yeah, like I said before, y'all, you guys need anything, hit me up personally. I'll answer. Uh, and, and I'll send you that link when I get this this whole giveaway going. I'll okay. send you something. If you don't mind posting for me, I appreciate that. Man. Yeah. We just want to have success, dude. The more success to that, the more I can give to the community. And I just love to live my life traveling, shaking hands for every veteran in America, man. Absolutely. Well, hey, uh, hit, hit me up today. This episode's going out uh, tomorrow night. So Cool. Uh, Sounds good. We got the full team here. Mm. Uh, for Rocco, D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.